You're in the middle of your medical malpractice trial and you are on the witness stand being cross-examined by the defense attorney. But now he asks you a question and you want to go ahead and give a long-winded explanation to explain away the answer to a question he just asked you. Can you do it? Can you explain whatever you want to in response to one of his questions? You want to know the answer? Come join me for a moment as I share with you some terrific information. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. All right, so let's say you brought a lawsuit against your doctor claiming that he was careless and that his carelessness was a cause of your injuries. The doctor denies all of your claims, which means your case goes all the way to trial. All right, so now in New York, that's going to take two or three years for you to get to trial. All right, so now you've gotten to trial. You are called to the witness stand. Your attorney calls you as a witness. And now he spends a great deal of time asking you questions that call for answers to his open-ended questions. Hey, Mrs. Jones, tell us what you did here. Tell us what happened then. Explain to the jury what you did next. What happened then? He'll give you plenty of opportunity to go ahead and explain everything that occurred. After a period of time, your attorney will finish and say, Your Honor, I have no more questions. The judge will then turn to the defense lawyer and say, Counselor, you may begin your cross-examination. And now, assuming that this defense lawyer is worth his salt and knows what he's doing, he's going to be asking you short, leading questions that call for one of four answers. He's going to say, listen, I only want you to answer yes or no. And if you can't answer yes or no, tell me and I will ask a different question. So really, you only have four options. You can say yes, you could say no, you could say I don't know, or I can't answer the question the way you phrased it. Those are really your four options if the attorney is asking short leading questions. Now, what's a short leading question? Questions that only ask about one fact. Mrs. Jones, isn't it true that on January 1st you made an appointment with Dr. Gold? Yes. And on that day you actually went to his office, true? Yes. And you came alone, isn't that right? Yes. And when you came to visit him you filled out some forms, true? Yes. And on those forms, one of the spaces said, what is your primary complaint? Isn't that true? Yes. And you actually wrote something in there. True? Yes. And you wrote that you had pain in your left breast. Isn't that right? Yes. So what am I doing? I'm asking short leading questions about one single fact in each and every question. It calls only for yes, no, I don't know, or I can't answer that question. Now, what happens if during the course of cross-examination, assuming the attorney is asking you these series of questions in a short leading fashion, what happens if you feel the need to go ahead and explain the answer and that you can only make sense of the question if you take the time to explain the answer? Can you tell the defense attorney, listen, I can't answer your question the way you asked, but let me go ahead and explain and tell you why your question is wrong. Can you do that? Well, I will suggest that your attorney will probably tell you that if you have that opportunity where the door is now open and you can go ahead and explain away something, then by all means go ahead and do it. And you will find that inexperienced attorneys have a great deal of trouble trying to rein in and trying to control the witness in that instance because they will go ahead and the witness will go ahead and explain something. Now the young attorney, the novice attorney will go ahead and get frustrated and finally they may turn to the judge and say, judge, the witness isn't doing what I asked them to do. Can you help? In that instance, the attorney looks ineffective. But let's say for a moment that the attorney is very experienced and knows exactly what they're doing. And now you do find an opening where you can go ahead and try and explain away the answer to the question. And you start doing that. But the lawyer says, excuse me, Mrs. Jones, did I ask you for an explanation? Well, no, but the only way I can really answer, wait a second. You promised me at the beginning of my questioning that if you could not answer my questions yes or no, that you would tell me you couldn't answer yes or no, and rather than give me a long-winded explanation, you promised you would let me know so I could ask you a different question. Isn't that right? You promised that only a few minutes ago, right? So now a good attorney is going to take you back to the first series of questions that he asked you at the beginning, which basically said, listen, Mrs. Jones, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. If you can answer yes or no, please tell me, okay? And of course you say yes. And if you cannot answer yes or no, will you tell me you can't answer the question, okay? And don't give me an answer or don't give me an explanation. Fair enough? Yes. Just tell me I can't answer the question and I will ask a different question. So if you now try, after making those promises and appearing reasonable to do so, if you now try and insert an explanation into one of the answers that you give, the attorney is going to take you right back to the promises you made at the beginning of his questioning. And if he doesn't do that, 
Now it looks like you're trying to slide something in. And it looks like you're trying to add something in. And now you're beginning to play word games with the attorney. And now you're beginning to fight with the attorney over the wording of questions, over what he's trying to do. Maybe you think he's trying to ask a trick question. And now the jury may get a different perception of you as a person trying to honestly answer his questions. If you feel like you really need to explain the answer to one of his questions and cannot answer it yes or no, the better tactic may simply be, Counselor, I'm sorry, I can't answer your question yes or no because it calls for an explanation. Fine, now the attorney will go ahead and continue on with a series of other questions. But that answer that you gave really is a trigger to your lawyer. He likely will make a note of it. And why would he do that? Because when the defense lawyer is done cross-examining you, your attorney is going to have another opportunity to get up and to ask you additional questions. In law, we call that redirect questioning. So now, after he's done, the judge will turn to your attorney and say, Counselor, do you have any additional questions? Yes, Judge. Hey, Mrs. Jones, my opponent asked you a question before in which you said you couldn't answer yes or no, but instead needed to give an explanation. Tell the jury what that explanation was. And now it gives you the opportunity to go ahead and explain everything. So why do I share this quick information with you? I share it with you because this does come up in practically every single civil trial here in New York involving an accident case, involving a wrongful death case, involving a medical malpractice case, where now you're on the witness stand and the attorney is holding you to short, concise, leading questions, calling for yes, no, I don't know, or I can't answer. And yet you feel the need, the need to go ahead and explain. So hopefully this has been informative, hopefully it's been eye-opening, and of course, if you have questions about your matter and you have not yet started a lawsuit but are thinking about bringing one, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. You know I answer questions like yours every single day and I'd love to chat with you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. Well, that's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a wonderful day.